In what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. Hello viewers, I'm SB and this is Phoenix Point. Aside from what we just saw there in the cinematic, I don't know a tremendous amount about what we're uh, getting ourselves into here. What I do know is that this is a game in the same genre as XCOM, and that the company that made it, uh, Snapshot Games, was co-founded by Julian Gollop, who, with his brother, created the original XCOMs. So this is a modern take on that thing from the original source of that thing, uh, and that's all the information that I needed to know to know that I was going to play it. So I have kept my head out of the hype and information cycle. I don't really know what mechanics we're looking at here. I'm very curious to explore this thing with all of you, so let's get started. Uh, I think we're probably going to turn the difficulty up from the base. Let's, uh, let's go one notch up here. Uh, not to brag or anything, but in my experience, these games are usually a, a little bit on the easy side. Uh, so, I'm very interested to see how they're going to solve, or attempt to solve, some of the problems that have become obvious in the modern XCOM model. In particular, uh, the way that the game gets easier and easier over time. Uh, I don't know if they have a plan. I don't know if they did try to solve that problem, but I'll be, I'll be real curious to see how this thing goes over the course of the long campaign. My name is Randolph Symes. I am the last leader of the Phoenix Project. If you are hearing this, I am most likely dead. But in happier news, a scarab has been sent to pick you up, and its artificial intelligence will take you to Phoenix Point. Get to it quickly and safely. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're right in there. All right. I thought there was going to be a little more. Uh, try the camera controls. Hey, it turns out you can move the camera around, dragging and buttons, and you can turn it, and you can zoom it, and the scroll wheel not... Oh, scroll wheel changes elevation. Okay. Pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, it sure looks like an XCOM, huh? All right. Move your soldier to the highlighted tile. We did it. So it looks like fight. it looks like action points. I'm assuming that the things under the health bar are action points. It looks like they work a little bit differently here than they did in XCOM. Enemy icons above your action bar show all the spotted enemies. A red icon shows an enemy in direct line of sight from the selected soldier. All right, we'll Let's grab this dude. Here. And oh, soldiers have four action points to use for shooting and movement. A soldier can move a number of tiles for each action point depending on speed. Areas marked with the blue outline show where the soldier can shoot from, so you can see... Okay. When we mouse over a tile, near the mouse over we get an indication of how many action points it will take... How many we will have left when we move to that location. It's weird that you spend them fractionally. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so we can shoot with two action points if we were to move further... Okay, yeah, it, it says down here, this is two action points, this, which I assume is reload is one, and that is... I don't know what that is, but it is also one. What? Okay, never mind. they will I'm sure they'll tell us what the actions are. I don't need to try to puzzle this out. All right, go to the place. I like that it shows you the line of sight you have on enemies, so that you don't have to guess where you might... what you might be able to see from where. It was a real problem with the first of the modern XCOMs. I also like that it stops your movement if you encounter a new thing. The health bar indicates the current hit points. The armor pips to the right show the amount of damage prevented for each shot. So we have 140, we'll prevent 20 from each hit. Uh, when targeting an enemy, the amount of damage from an attack is shown on the health bar. The wider the damage prediction, the more likely it is. That's... Acquiring target. Okay. 
it's a weird version of that thing. So the damage here, I mean, it looks pretty white to me. So I guess it's pretty likely that this will work. Okay, those guns do a very serious amount of damage. Once a soldier is out of APs, they enter standby mode, and the next soldier is selected. If there are no soldiers with APs remaining, your turn ends. So we want to put this guy into standby. And then just end our turn. Okay. Is his arm a gun? Is he... Is that a biological gun? I can't move the... Can't zoom the camera in right now. It doesn't want, doesn't want me to change things. All right. When a character is attacked, damage is done to the body part that was hit. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we have like a, a location indicator here. Uh, as well as reducing general hit points. Wounded body parts are marked in yellow on the damage display left of the bar. Disabled body parts are marked in red. I'm assuming you do not want your head and torso to get disabled. That seems bad. Uh, disabled body parts will usually cause bleeding, the loss of strength, possibly willpower. Special abilities given by the body part will be lost. What a weird sentence. Okay, so there's locational damage. And I assume that our armor will, will change how our different locations take damage. That's an interesting system. Uh, any object in the environment can provide cover. When next to a low obstacle, you crouch behind it to reduce exposure. When next to a high obstacle, you remain standing. But you can step to the side to fire. This is very, uh, very familiar to anybody who's played uh, modern XCOM. Free aim allows you to target a body part and see the effects of disabling the body part. Each part has its own hit points and armor value. Damage prediction is also shown for the targeted part. Okay, hold on. The outer blue circle shows where all your shots will land. The more accurate the weapon, the smaller the circle. So, enter free aim. Scroll the mouse wheel. Oh, weird. Okay. So all of the shots will land inside of the outer blue circle. More accurate weapons cause the circle to be smaller, so... So there's no indication of miss percentage, but like if I were to try, if I were to try for this shot, assuming that all parts of the circle are roughly equally uh, possible, this is like a 50% miss chance. That's a really interesting way to do this. So yeah, we can shoot, we could just shoot at his gun directly to disable it, maybe knock it out of his hand. I mean, maybe not knock it out of his hand because it seems to be his hand. But, you know, if we fight humans, <laughs> maybe we could shoot the guns out of their hands. And, yeah, look, the the amount of damage that's being predicted and the likelihood of that damage being dealt on his health bar is changing dynamically. Not just as we change parts, but also even as we move the crosshair around on those parts. That's a fascinating design. Okay, well, let's just pop this dude, like, right in the torso part. I guess I want to shoot him somewhere where the whole circle is over his organic body. I don't want to have a chance of hitting the gun. Hostile neutralized. That's really interesting. What a what a different way of doing that. And then shooting eats two action points but doesn't end your turn. So we were able to step to new cover, fire and then move afterward. Okay, that's a pretty different sequence than I'm used to in these kinds of games. It's going to take a little bit of uh, rewiring my brain. I think I, I think I get what they're doing here, though. This is a, this is an interesting system. Crabs, man. It always comes down to crabs. It's almost like there's some kind of terror from the deep, you know? Okay, kill all the enemies. We are no longer hand-holding. We are now in murder mode. Well... Did we get an indication, like, if I select the enemy... Okay, we can we can hit an info button. This is actually... It's a lot of info. I gotta give them that. Armor is locational. But what I was really curious about was if it's easy to tell how far they can move. And it looks like it's not. So I don't know, like, I don't know how far we have to be away from this guy to be safe. I definitely think we're, we're more concerned about the two close ones. So... So, yeah, the, the function of cover is really interesting with this aiming system. So, like, if we move up to here, and then we go to shoot at this guy, we can pretty easily... Okay, if I shoot, like, right here, the whole circle is in his biological parts. 
So it's not that it, cover doesn't reduce your hit percentage in the same way as it usually does in these games. It's it's all about it actually covering your body, which means that they're like little obstructions like this have some value. Let's do this. There are a lot of mechanical implications to the super weird way they've chosen to do this, and I'm like uh, I'm I'm digging it. Also, I appreciate how uh, how incredibly accurate these weapons are. Look at the tiny tiny little circles. So we want to shoot him. Just like any place except the carapace, because the carapace has 20 points of armor. Alright, I think I'm getting it. Now let's hope that we are far enough away from that dude that he can't just run over and punch me. He's certainly going to try, though. Yeah, okay, we couldn't have been far enough away. He deploys his shield, so does that put a status effect on him? Can I see... I have no indication of, like, his buffs or debuffs. We can see his equipment. Ready. Steady. But now, like, a lot of... Okay, so, like, physically, just a lot of his body is covered by the shield, which has way more armor. And it's actually really hard for this guy to get a shot. But we do have one. That's super cool. Alright, vehicles are mounted armored personnel carriers with a mounted weapon. Soldiers can enter the vehicle by moving on the entry marker and pressing enter vehicle. Okay. Go inside. Run away from the crab monsters. Got it. Sprinting. Alright, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that's not super clear yet, but I'm digging the little bit that we got to see here. I do wish, um, I'm, I can tell you right now, I want to hit enter. I do wish that it was a little bit clearer, like, what the inner and outer circle mean, because we're given two circles in our aiming reticle, and it would be nice to know if, like, there's a good reason that it's marked as a, a small circle in a larger circle, right? As, instead of just being one circle. So I'm wondering if it's like your shots are more likely to land within the inner circle. Maybe it's like... 60% go inner, 40% go outer, or something like that. I would just, I would like that to be a little bit more explicit. Um, because right now, there's no way to know what our miss percentage is. We can, we can, like, hazard a guess. Like, if half the circle's off of him, it's about half. If you are hearing this message, an Hold alert on. has been triggered, and you will need to clear out the enemy forces. There may be others who receive this signal. Help them if you can. It's all up to you now. Good luck, operatives. Symes out. Like, all the way out. Okay, go to the base, reclaim the base. I can do that. Um, I'm just saying, like, I sure would like numbers. The way the way things are, are working now, it's a little bit murky. Alright, the inventory shows everything carried by a soldier and items on the ground or in adjacent crates. If weight of carried items and armor is greater than their strength, then the soldier suffers a movement penalty... Let's open the thing. So the tactical inventory display is divided into three sections. R okay, ready, backpack, and all of the stuff on the ground. Uh, ready is items that are currently equipped. Backpack is items carried but not equipped. So not stuff that we could touch with a single action, I'm assuming. And then, yeah, ground. Entering the inventory display has no AP cost, but moving items from one section to another costs one AP Except for moving items to the ground, which doesn't cost... Okay, so you can throw stuff down all you want. Uh, equipment crates contain weapon weapons, ammo, and surprise equipment. The first time a unit moves next to an equipment crate, the inventory is automatically opened, and the soldier gets a will point bonus. Moving any number of items from the crate to a soldier's backpack or ready section costs 1 AP. So it's it's not 1 AP each. It's 1 AP for moving all of, for all, up to all of them. Take a med kit from the thing and put it in the thing. I would like to do that. I would also like a grenade. A grenade seems good. Uh, then I also want more grenades. So, yeah, it costs us one action, about one action point to move up here. So we may as well just grab... I'm not allowed to grab... Oh, I think it's probably because it's the tutorial. That, like, this stuff... What is this, even? Okay, right... Right-clicking on items does not give you your des their description. Instead, it closes the, uh, the menu. I will say I'm not wild about 
the degree to which this uh, tutorial is straight jacketing me. Like, I would have liked to be able to move those other items around and stuff. Uh, I guess the UI is complicated enough that they don't want you getting lost and doing other things, but that's a little annoying. It is also possible to come across allied characters in battle. Allies surrounded by the blue circle can be rescued and come under your control. So this guy whose circle is not actually blue at the moment. End your turn for- really? You want me to just run into the open and get shot? That's a weird thing to make me do. Hey, what a surprise. I took a bunch of damage. Okay, and getting shot does weaken your heart. I'm injured. Ah! Status effects are bonuses or penalties. Uh, positive effects are usually acquired through abilities, while negative effects come from enemy weapons and abilities. Bleeding is quite common. Soldiers suffering from bleeding are dealt damage at the start of their turn. Can be cured using a med kit. Okay. After a mission ends, bleeding and disabled limbs are cured, but hit points have to be restored at a medical facility. Items shown in the ready section are ready. They can be selected for use without an AP cost. Okay. I would like to throw a grenade. Am I allowed to... Okay, I'm... I gotta move first, then... This is kind of what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. You're t This is a very, very minor Here quibble goes. in a part of the game that everybody is only going to play a single time, but still, it's a little annoying. So they do area damage around the spot where they land. Okay. Distance at which a grenade can be thrown depends on the soldier's strength. That's interesting. So, is this going to harm my item crate? Well, I guess we'll find out. Oh no, my crate! Also, it seems like grenades are maybe very powerful? Med kits restore hit points and remove bleeding and poison. You must be next to an injured soldier in order to heal them. Click on the thing, do the ability, it costs two action points, let's you heal okay? you. It's a pretty weak animation. Uh, allied characters are rescued by moving a soldier adjacent to them. Yes, you did just say that. So we go and we get our new friend. There are various soldier classes, each with their own set of abilities and equipment proficiency. While any soldier can use any armor or weapon, doing so comes at the risk of lower accuracy or fumbling. Heavy class soldiers are proficient in heavy weapons, surprise, surprise, and usually equipped with armor, capable of enduring large amounts of damage. Also, they have jetpacks. That's pretty neat. Select the heavy. And then... Willpower determines a soldier's will to fight and ability to perform advanced class abilities. Begin with will points equal to your willpower. They are gained by killing enemies, opening crates, or reaching objective zones. Uh, they are lost when allies die if you're... Will points fall to zero, you panic and lose a turn. So that's interesting. Using abilities makes you closer to panicking. It's like an idea of being affected by exertion. Uh, will, powers, will points can be partially re uh, restored by using the recovery ability. Is that what this is? All right, we'll jump jet. Let's jump a jet to here. Jump over the wing of the aircraft to land near that Good enemy. Idea. It's, it's a little goofy and gamey that using a jetpack makes you more likely to panic in battle. If I was in battle and I got to use a jetpack, I would be so psyched. It's going to increase my will points. Although I will say they did model it correctly uh, where you get will points for getting loot. There's nothing in the universe that calms me down like opening a loot box. Yeah, check out his, like, Tyranid-ass biological gun. That's wild. Some abilities, such as Return Fire, allow characters to react during the enemy turn. Return Fire allows a character to shoot back when enemies shoot at it or at any of its allies, as long as the attacker is within 18 tiles. Only certain weapons are able to return fire, regardless of what skills a unit might have. Move, uh, move your assault under the wing, then shoot the enemy, and observe the return fire. I don't know, man. I think I kind of get it. Don't feel like I need to observe the return fire. Okay, so this guy has a return fire indicator down here. There's not so much a return fire indicator visible on him, and I am not allowed to go into aiming mode. It seems like if you don't aim specifically, they just kind of go center mass. Hey, look at that. He returned fire, just like we knew he would. Overwatch ability allows soldiers to guard an area during the enemy's turn. If an enemy enters the Overwatch cone, it is attacked automatically. Alright, let's Something let's move by. him over to the place here. Let's stand out in the open and do an Overwatch, which is not the way, the way I would generally recommend it. 
Select this, select the target position. Okay, that's interesting. So Overwatch is way more directional here than it is in XCOM. And it looks like you can, maybe you can set a maximum depth for it, which will be useful. Like if there's anything equivalent to, uh, you know, a video game shotgun, uh, shotgun soldiers in XCOM will sometimes use reaction fire at ranges where they almost can't hit. So it'd be nice to be able to set a, like a maximum depth. Okay, so click it here. I did it. I'm overwatching. A character's stats, equipment, body parts, abilities, and status effects can be viewed at any time from the character info panel. Select your soldier, then select info from the menu. Yep, okay, we saw this already. Assault training gives you proficiency with assault rifles and shotguns. Your torso is disabled, which seems bad. You need your torso, I'm pretty sure. Like, to live. Alright. neutralized. Solid shooting. Boy, that that AoE will point reduction when somebody goes down, I could see that leading to some real uh, cascade failure type situations. Oh god. This doesn't seem to be taking damage anymore. I wonder if that's just a tutorial thing. The tutorial would break if the soldier died, so he just stops taking damage. It's a little goofy. But alright. Kill enemies. I am all about kill all enemies. This feels doable. Uh, so... Okay, we have a way bigger circle with this weapon, but it does, uh, it does a lot of damage, seems like. So I'm looking for an area where the damage bar is, like, really, really white. I mean, right here, shooting him in the pincer seems like it's, it's lethal. Damage 65... Oh no, sorry, that's the that's the stat. I was looking at that and it was like, 65 damage, how's that going to be good enough? But no, that's the stats of his pincer as a weapon. Let's just shoot like sentry. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, that got him. Oh right, return fire. Remember how they were just telling me about return fire? I should, uh, I should remember that that's a thing. Is there any way of canceling his return fire? I guess I, if there is, I don't know what it is. But I, what I could do is just kill him with my gun. Like this. Yeah, I think that free aim thing is really cool. I don't know if it's necessary to do it all the time, but I do know that I think it is neat and novel, so I'm going to be doing it all the time. A fast way to progress your research is to steal it from other factions. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Listen, why would I hire scientists when I can just benefit from everybody else's scientists? We'll hire thieves and heisters. The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose. New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world, and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning, and armies are rising from the sea. 
Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. That's uh, that's kind of cool that they were called the Phoenix Project because they were trying to resurrect humanity from the devastation of the war, and then that name gets repurposed for something else later. That's a that's a neat little bit of narrative design. The Geoscape shows the world in all locations and sites of interest. In the beginning, all you know about is your base, Phoenix Point. And then we can drag the thing around, select the bases button. Look, I can drag the thing around. Okay, so we are in Northern Africa. Your base is your stronghold, containing all facilities as well as vital resources such as food, materials, and tech. Phoenix Point is in bad shape. You need to repair your vehicle bay before you can launch your Manticore aircraft. So start the repair of the thing, then return to the Geoscape and advance time. Okay, what are these resources? Which, which one is which? So that's the tech, and that's the materials, and obviously the green apple is food. Because there's nothing in the world more delicious than green apples. Alright, and then we have a like a pretty standard old school base building deal happening here. Uh, Alright, let's go back to the thing, because it's not going to let me play around with all the buttons until we finish the tutorial. Okay, we can see the status of the project down here. It does feel like there should be something else happening. <laughs> the Manticore is your aircraft for transporting soldiers and exploring the world. The aircraft's crew is shown in the aircraft bar at the bottom of the screen using their soldier class icons. Send the Manticore to the unexplored site. Alright, seems pretty straightforward. Initially, all sites on the Geoscape are unexplored. You need at least one soldier on board an aircraft in order to explore. It takes time. You may get ambushed, so be on your guard. Okay. Go out and do missions. Got it. I've played a video game before. Oh, it's just filling... I assumed it was going to put us on, like, a little map. Uh, eliminate all... Okay, now it's going to put us on a map. We just had to, like, run the world a little... Uh, run the run the spin a little bit. Okay, threat level low, light level day, enemy Pandoran. So we're just here to retrieve some crates and stuff. We don't necessarily need to kill everybody, right? I'm a, I'm a little worried looking at this, this will point system and thinking to how things usually go while we're learning a strategy game. I'm a little worried that we are going to experience one of those great big cascade failures I was talking about at some point, probably in the fairly near future. You know, I should have probably looked around our base a little bit more, because I don't actually even know, are the... How many soldiers do we have? What kind of equipment do we have? I, it, it's possible that it wouldn't have let me look anyway, because it really does feel like a very straight-jacketed tutorial experience. It's not a big deal, like I was saying, but it does bug me. Okay, we have four soldiers. And our mission here is kill all enemies, protect all crates. Can we see... Uh, zoom out. Here we go. Can we see where the crates are? Yes. Can we see... Okay, we can... We have an indication that might be the location of enemies, but it might also... Since all the ones that we can see are on the edge of the map, these could also be just, like, enemies are going to spawn from here. So, what do we have? We have a sniper. And... An assault. And the heavy guy... And another assault. Okay. Well, I guess let's go to the crates. So we probably don't... If the enemies are all at the edge of the map, we probably do not want to just Overwatch creep around, right? We probably want to move full speed to get some kind of defensive position on these crates. But... Okay, there's one here that's already pretty protected. We could get up on top of... Ooh, there's an equipment thing. This one in this distant building makes me a little... What is this? Huh. There's an icon here that I'm not sure of the meaning of, and it's not visible. Oh, this it's this room. This room is glowing for some reason. Okay, well, that's a thing we might want to check out. Why don't we split up the assaults? Where's the you? You are the other assault. You go this way. It might not be a good idea to just leave them in the open. I'm figuring that the enemies are too far away to actually punish me for this kind of behavior, but we might uh, we might be unpleasantly surprised in a moment here. On the double. 
Wow, the, the heavy really does not move fast. I guess you have the jetpack. That's how you're supposed to get around. Yeah, maybe that's what I should have done. It's just like jetpack out to the middle of the... What is that? Okay, so we got we got live ammunition. Also, I'm not allowed to zoom the camera in or out during the enemy turn. Okay, we're doing a terrible job so far. I am not defending these crates very well at all. So we're seeing a lot of different types of enemies all of a sudden. What is your deal? Your icon looks like the thing from the Black Lagoon. You are a pain chameleon. Become invisible when dealt damage and hide in a nearby location. Okay, we should probably try to kill this thing in a single fire action then, if we can. Uh, where is... yeah, you. You are the person I need to look at. So we wanna... It's a little bit unlike XCOM in that we want to try to find lines of sight that are not just available, but where I'm not like looking through a lot of things, because it seems like obstructions are pretty bad. We also want to make sure that we're not too visible to the other enemies, so I'm going to move to here, and we're going to try to pace this thing. Alright, let's see about all this. Ooh, boy. That circle is huge. So, if we shoot it in the face, I could remove <laughs> I could lower its perception. It also just has a pistol. That's just a pistol. It's not... It's not like a crazy alien weapon built into its arm. That thing just stole a gun from a Dick's Sporting Goods. Well, if I shoot his arm off, does it affect his ability to gun? I mean, I guess with the circle being the size it is, we really just have to shoot dead center, right? Okay, we got a lot of hits. We did successfully disable his head, which has removed his double perception trait. And I would assume also probably has had some effect on his other, his, his normal perception. You know, the single perception. This is a mind fragger. Oh, because it mind controls people. Well, that guy has to die immediately. Where's that sniper? You have him? Yeah, you have, you have a pretty clean shot on these dudes. There are definitely enemies with guns. I think it's probably a good idea for me to get behind the cover. Alright, let's do something. So, it's not super likely I'm going to be able to hit that thing because of the distance. Yeah, man, this, this circle shooting mechanic really has me having to reconsider a lot of stuff about the way I usually play these games. Uh, we need whatever it takes, whatever we can get to tighten up these circles. I'm going to go for the shot, and there's a pretty good chance we're just not going to hit him. If we do hit him, though, it's going to be good. He is alerted. He is no longer alerted. You would think that they all would have been alerted by the first gunshot. So it's actually going to be really hard to hit this guy because he's behind this extremely large thing. I also, like, I really appreciate that the, like this makes the idea of lines of fire matter. It's not just about whether you're pressed up immediately against cover, but, like, that guy could slowly approach from behind this and stay low and he would still be strong against our shot the entire time. This is a good system. This is a good design. All right, we got a we got a jetpack. I'm too bad at moving around. Uh, can I jetpack to a position over here that makes sense? I mean, I I could jetpack like to right here, and then we could just press this guy through this doorway. Yeah, let's jump to the cover right here. I probably should have done something like this the first turn. See, that's also glowy kind of want to move into a glowy place just to see what it does. And you, you cannot make it to the glowy, and also you should probably focus. That guy has a gun, and he is alerted, so I think I'm just going to move up here and then shoot at him. Oh boy. We're not going to get much of a shot. If we were to damage the carapace out completely, we lose 40 max HP. That's pretty good, but man, that seems very unlikely. Should I try to shoot the launcher? That's like such a tight shot. Maybe I'd be better off not doing this. Because like right here, what are, the, what are the actual odds of hitting there? They're not good, right? I wonder if I could destroy this thing by shooting at it, though. 
Actually, am I allowed to just shoot at that on purpose? Yes, I am. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't destroy it because it's like a big heavy metal container. But that's, uh, that's going to be potentially useful in the future when shooting at other cover that is maybe a little more destructible. And I guess we're not doing a great job with the protecting. Oof, okay. That thing cannot sustain another hit like that. Oh! And it, do it doesn't take all of his action points to, to do that. Well, we're losing supplies. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a shot off on this guy. Is that... No, that's a second enemy. Okay, well, that, that crate is also dead, then. There's no way we could clear out two enemies in this room fast enough to stop them from destroying that. We might be able to keep this one safe, though. Yeah, so we're, we're getting, at best, a partial victory. Oh, check it out, because he has more arms. Yeah, that body part system has, like, a lot of really interesting applications, or implications, in a universe where you cannot necessarily know the number of limbs that your opponents are going to have. Yo, that sucks. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. Alright, um... Can you... Do you have anything on him? How bad is this shot? No, it's not that bad, honestly. We can move up a little bit. You know, honestly, I'm not that worried about him getting a shot off on us at this range. Assuming that his, um... His gunfire works approximately the same way that ours does. So I think what I have to do here is just, like, push... But I want to leave a little bit of movement so that I can get back into cover after the push. Can I get up on this? Oh, that seems like a smart move. Yeah, and high ground is going to be so meaningful with the way the shooting works. Okay, so I think maybe I just want to use my whole turn getting up. If there's one thing I've learned from Mark Echo is the importance of getting up. Uh, I'm not really sure what the best... I, I kind of want to do it like this, but I also don't want to be that shootable. And this will give me an easy time dropping down onto the enemies in that building next turn. And we're just going to not... Oh, really? You can see that? Doesn't seem like you should be able to see that. Because there, uh, there's a wall between you and him and everything. Alright, you're good. You're standby mode. You, I think, can probably finish this dude off. Because he's very much in the open. We don't have to hit him all that hard, right? How much he has 80 HP left? So we could remove his ability to spawn mist with that arm, or... I mean, there's pretty good odds that I just kill him, right? I'm just going to shoot dead center. Okay, did not get there. Right, I forgot that that does not end your turn. Oh, this is interesting. So we don't know where he is, but I could just fire and hope. That's kind of a fun idea. I'm not going to do it. But <laughs> but if you had a if you had good reason to think that you knew where the enemy was going was going to run to, you could just shoot into the into the darkness and possibly hit them. That's actually really that's a neat thing. All right, let's move forward a little bit. Let's move forward as much as I can. Ah, it's not very much. Let's move forward as much as I can and then try to get this shot. Odds are not terrible that I will make contact. I will not kill him unless... No, I will not kill him, no matter what. But we can soften him up and make him easier to put down next turn. Hostile oh, I don't... Missed. Didn't even get him. That's a shame. And then with you... I really don't know what to do. It doesn't make any sense for you to fire. We could just jetpack. Right? I could I could jetpack up to up to here and have have a move next turn that that will be effective. Maybe that's all I do. It feels bad, but like is the heavy in particular moves so slowly. I'm going to do this. You're down to just two will points. If somebody else were to die around here, it would be pretty bad for you. Soldiers are out of action points. So I think the, the glowing heads on the map 
are spawners, not current enemy locations. That's the directions that we know they're coming from. I'm pretty in cover, so take that, buddy. Uh-oh. Alright, it looks like... Is that zero damage an indicator of a miss or an indicator of an attack that hit for less than my armor? It's hard to know. Right, this guy's gonna do a thing. And as soon as he reveals himself, hopefully I'll get Overwatch? Now uh, maybe he's he's not revealed until the end of his turn or something. Potentially. I, I sorta wanna just have one of the soldiers run into the little room because I wanna see what the what the sparkly brain zone does. So let's do that. Okay, it's just a will point gain. The soldier is like, hey, this location makes me feel safe and secure. Alright, let's pace this dude. He will not like it if I shoot him in the face six times with my gun. Yeah, I, I should stop saying it because I probably said it enough, but I like the systems here. This is good. Aiming. Oh, you are very screwed. You are so doomed right now. Look at how doomed you are. I hit the carapace. Unfortunately, there was no way to aim that such that I was not going to have a chance of hitting the carapace. Uh, he is dazed. So hold on. Can I click on him now and get info? He's bleeding for 10, so he'll die actually at the beginning of his turn. He is, he is dealt with. But I saw him get dazed, and there's no indication of what dazed actually does. I'm assuming it removes some of his action points for next turn. Maybe all of them even. Uh, how do I deal with you? Oh, I have a grenade. That's how I deal with you. Can I hit the, the throw from here? No. Alright, let's... Wait, no. Uh, move to here. And as far as we know, this is the last enemy, right? As far as we know, is is definitely risky, but there we go. How about some of that? Very good terrain destruction. I like that a lot. And he had loot. I want loot. And then I don't really know what to do with you. I guess let's just take a nice wide overwatch. Because that guy's dead, right? Provided that we understand the systems. Well, you know what? Even if that guy's not dead... There's nothing the sniper can do about it. I'm going to intentionally not loot this crate. Because I want to see if uh, if we get the stuff from the crates for free after a successful mission. Or if we actually are expected to loot them during mission time. Okay, so he bleeds out. That heavy cannon is very satisfying. No, there totally is another guy. Oh, I knew there was another guy. We saw them. Yeah, we saw somebody moving around. Silly me. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I suspect that dude's not in good shape. He's not going to be in good shape in a second here. Alright, so he did... He did mist up. So we can't actually see his current location. Oh, sorry. That's, I was like, why can't I see him? But it's because I had the wrong unit selected. So we kind of can't see him, I guess. But I can, like, 100% see him. <laughs> the thing about this plan is that I can 100% see you right now. So I'm just going to put this, like, as into your body as possible. I did manage to miss. Alright, well, let's try that again. I don't know what this mist is doing, but I do know that I don't feel like I want to go down into it. Repositioning. Oh, I should... What is this ability? Bash. Oh, that's a rifle butt. It's like hitting somebody with the rifle. Okay. Alright, can you maybe do something here? I mean, you can't kill him. You can mess him up. We could try to knock his gun out of his hand. Try to knock his hand out of his hand. That's as effective as shooting him anywhere else, right? I don't think you should have this. Attack successful. Right. I took the arm and the leg. I should probably move away from the uh, the opening here. 
And then you should just run fast to the location where things are still happening. I think at this point it's unlikely that we're going to see any more damage dealt to the mission objectives, but we're still very much in a uh, very much in a, in danger quick. of taking more damage on our soldiers. We should probably also take some cover. Ow. Well, apparently shooting up the arm that the gun is in does not stop the gun from being used. Also, he can see me, but I can't see him. I wonder if this will work. We're, we're going to try this because I'm pretty confident we'll be able to take this guy down with other people if this doesn't work. But we know approximately where he is, so... No such luck. Okay. All right, let's get some actual vision. I cannot get some actual vision. Down there somewhere. All right, can we get, um... Yeah, where's the other assault? Let's see if we can see anything in there. You guys have grenades, right? One of you has a grenade. Maybe we just lob a grenade down there? Is the, is the white an indication of unavailable trajectory? Like, can I do this? No, I cannot do this. Okay, there is a spot down here where I can throw it. I th Let's just do that. Let's see if we can catch him with this. Alright, I got him. Also, most of the other things in that room, because, you know, grenades. We did a little damage to the wall in the middle there and opened it up. Which is a, a thing, like, little holes in walls are going to be really meaningful now. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of it a little bit. It's definitely going to take some adjusting. It's going to be some time before we are experts at this. But I like the things it's doing. So I'm assuming shotguns are going to have really big circles. Uh, all surviving crates have been recovered and resources transferred to our score stores. So we got those and we also got like a gun. And so, so we got the gun that one of those guys was carrying maybe. And it, it looks like we probably did. I'm guessing we probably did get the contents of that crate. So we don't have to be in a hurry to open them. We just have to keep them safe and try not to grenade them accidentally. So we got a magazine for the cipher, the handgun that we use, and then we got this other handgun that seems fine. I don't know. I don't actually know if those numbers are good or not. On completing a mission, all gathered items and resources are gathered to your overall supplies. Uh, soldiers get fatigued during battle, losing one stamina point per turn. Okay, that's an interesting way of imposing like a soft turn limit that makes you not want to like overwatch creep forward. When stamina falls below 20%, a soldier will suffer an action point penalty in the next battle. Soldiers recover while resting at a base as long as the base has a functioning living quarters and medical bay. Got it. That seems pretty straightforward as well. Personnel roster shows all your soldiers and ground vehicles. You can transfer soldiers by selecting the location button on the right side of each soldier's list entry. And customize them, because of course you can. Alright, select personnel, go to equipment. We are still deep in the tutorial. You can equip your soldiers with new weapons, armor, and other items by dragging stuff around. You can also, you can equ instantly equip or produce items in ready slots by using the plus ammo and plus item buttons. Armor section shows the armor the soldier is wearing for legs, body, and head. The mounts section is for special equipment that can be attached to the corresponding piece of armor. Okay, so there's like... Helmet and helmet mount, body armor and body armor mount. Okay. So it feels to me like everybody ought to have a grenade and also a med kit. So stuff does have weight. And also we don't have enough grenades for everyone. Well, the, the sniper probably doesn't need one. Soldiers can increase strength, willpower, and speed, as well as acquire new abilities by spending skill points. If a soldier has used all their personal skill points, they can use the Phoenix skill points, which are common for everybody. Soldiers only acquire abilities for their current level or lower. 
Okay, so it's like, uh, it's built out very much like the skill selection screen from XCOM. Upon reaching level 4, each, uh, each soldier has the option to specialize in an additional class. The last row of abilities represent personal aptitudes the soldier is born with. Once you've adjusted your soldier's stats and abilities, go to research. So when it says the last row, it means this bottom row. So Adrian Tiny Alviso was born with the ability to become a cautious strongman. 20% bonus accuracy, but minus 10% damage dealt. That's just, that's interesting. That seems like it's probably pretty good, given the way the way we currently understand things to work. Right, because it's bonus accuracy, I'm assuming, is going to tighten the circle. So right now we have heavy training. We could eventually get the ability to bash people up real good, the ability to yawn at them just super hard. And then they run away because they're like, oh no, don't you get me started yawning. Okay. Research projects are critical for improving your capabilities and also winning the game, which is probably important. To speed up research, build more research labs. It requires time, so make sure time is advancing in the geoscape. Research atmospheric analysis. Global mist monitoring system. Okay, given what we know about the mist right now, it seems like we really do want to know where it is. Okay, so six hours on that. Does it want me to just tick the thing? I, I think it wants us to just pass time. All right, easy enough. Okay, and we can see the recovery status of our soldiers down here. Reprogramming of our satellite systems has revealed the extent of the new mist outbreak. The origin sites are in coastal sea regions, as in the previous two incursions, but the activity level seems higher, posing a serious threat to remaining life on Earth. Havens caught in the mist will be at risk, so we should explore mist-covered regions and defend havens within. Okay, new research available. The mist represents the progression of the Pandora virus as it spreads throughout the globe. Pandoran mutations will attempt to build colonies on areas of land covered by the mist, which will then attack nearby havens. Need equipment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, weapons, vehicles, and armor are manufactured by fabrication plants, provided the research has been developed and there are enough resources available. Manufacture a medkit. I don't know that we need to. I mean, we will, because we have to for the tutorial, but don't we already have... Yeah, we have so many. Doesn't feel like a good use of my time. Satellite uplinks allow area scans to be initiated, revealing new sites of interest. The more uplinks there are available, the more scans can be performed simultaneously. A scan can only be performed by an aircraft centered on its location. Scanning zone will expand over time. All right, let's perform one. Click on the scan area button. Okay, I can I can move the map. I guess it wants us to just let that run. Alright, so it grows out. It does not take all that long for your crew to rest up. Congratulations for completing the tutorial. From here on, it's all up to you to survive, explore, and become humanity's salvation. Check the Phoenixpedia for more information about the game. That's a bad name for that thing. All right, you must find out what happened to the Phoenix Project. Research the Phoenix Archives. Okay, what else do we have here? We can do autopsies on the different aliens that we've run into. Hmm, autopsying the Mindfragger gives us 150 materials. That's interesting. And then we can reverse engineer this handgun that we found to be able to build those, I assume. Even recruitment protocols lets us recruit new soldiers. Well, it said do this, but also this seems important. I'm, all right, let, let's do the last thing the tutorial asked of us. All right, so we only have four soldiers. Uh, what is this? Empty. Oh, right. I, they're not all fully equipped. Let's fix that. So the sniper has a handgun as well as the normal gun. The new one does 60 damage at 14 range. Well, this, uh, this does 50 damage, but at 18 range. Well, if the enemy's at long range, we can just shoot them with our, our big rifle. So why don't we equip that? We don't have any spare ammo, but it goes into battle with 10 slash 12. Wait a minute. Oh, are we not just carrying extra... Like, do I actually have to manage the number of bullets we have in addition to having to manage our magazines? That's... Well, 
<laughs> we have 10 shots. Let's hope we don't need them all. Uh, you can have a med kit. What are these? Oh, I can... Okay. And manufacture or scrap them. Uh, and then we need to make sure everybody's got stuff. Probably everybody can afford to have a med kit. That doesn't seem to be a big deal. And then also everybody gets a grenade. Except the sniper. Yeah, alright. I'm fine with this. What are these? This is a magazine for the Hell Cannon. It has two weight, though. So can we get do we get a mouse over indicating like how bad the movement penalty will be? Because if we're just going to move mostly with our uh, jetpack, maybe it's not a big deal. Then again, movement is so um, so minimal that I'd be worried about reducing it any further. Okay, I guess we're just out here playing the game now. Uh, we did find a site, and everybody's rested up and healed, so I guess let's go check it out. Will the scan move with the aircraft, I'm wondering? No, okay. It's like I, the aircraft drops a beacon, and the scan continues to emanate out from there. Alright, well, let's see what we found. Enter Synidrian, stage left. At the Synidrian Haven of Nowhere, the situation is tense. Someone figured out that our open and democratic society would be easy to infiltrate and steal from, one of the Haven's citizens tells our operatives. They pretended to join us, and then made off with some critical research, which I assume they want to sell to another faction. The citizen sighs. Well, I said they made off, but the truth is they didn't get very far. In fact, they're stuck in the Haven. But as you can imagine, this is a strange situation. These people pretended to be our friends. They lived in nowhere for months, all just to make a profit. I suppose old habits die hard. Okay, well, it seems like I should help them. Stop a group of thieves. I wonder what they mean by stop. I don't actually wonder. It did say kill all enemies right there. I wonder how heavily armed these thieves are. Uh, Mindfraggers can take control of your soldiers. You can remove... So they actually, like, jump onto the guy's head and then we have to shoot them off? Jeez. Well, that's another fun thing they can do because of the way the aiming in the game works. I bet that is gonna, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be a real nightmare for us at some point here. Hopefully these, uh, these thieves have not holed themselves up in a very defensible place. I'm hoping that they were just panicked and jumped inside of the first building they saw. Alright, let's see here. What, what do we see? Oh, that's, sorry, that's not the zoom out button. Here we go. Do we have any indication of where they are? We do know that there's an area over here that I would gain will from. It looks like... Okay, the map as a whole is pretty small. We can see the, the border. So we don't actually know where they are. They have a, There's a couple of, couple of places they could reasonably be. Also, apparently trees do not provide cover. Well, maybe you shouldn't move first, because they don't want you to get in everybody's way. Let's have... You move out to here and just, like, overwatch in this general direction. And then we'll have the assault approach a little bit. Move to here, at least. I think we probably want to close up pretty considerably, but I'm definitely worried about just ending my turn out in the open. We'll do that. You can step up here and keep Overwatch in the other direction. The Overwatch creep is way less effective uh, than it would be in XCOM, even without the stamina system, just because of the fact that Overwatch is directional here. Alright, you can hide behind this garbage can. Pretty wild that a little garbage can provides half cover and a tree provides no cover. Then again, cover is just obstructions, right? Okay, that guy has run out into the open. It looks like maybe they're all on this side. And that would make sense, that they all jumped into the building together. Born again, anarchist. Okay, well, now we have an idea. I have actually a pretty decent shot on this dude. Uh, can I move up just a little bit and still have cover? No, if I move up a little bit, I'm sa sacrificing cover. I mean, I have this glass shield in front of me. You know what my cover is? My cover is being really far away from the enemy. 
Zooming in. All right, we got a pretty decent shot here. Maybe go this, this where she was aiming has a little bit more empty. Let's just go center mass. Almost the whole circle is body now. There we go. Just trying to soften them up. So you definitely can't be here. This is not an okay spot. Yeah, I'm real worried about notions of like half cover and full cover. And I, I guess it does still matter because soldiers only crouch down when they feel that they are that they have half cover available to them. But I gotta remember that it's actual line of sight blocking that matters most. Well, I mean, I have a shot where I'm at right now. What does that shot actually look like? Pretty bad. We'd have to get fairly lucky. And the heavy, his gun is a single fire thing, but like, yeah, that circle is... That circle's not helping anybody. So, another thing we could do is we could just like move up to here, or I was gonna say, and throw a grenade, but we're not gonna be able to get a grenade anywhere near that guy. Mm, this is really risky. Because like, if we move up here and it doesn't work, we're very in the open. Maybe the right play is to just use Overwatch. We have to watch out for the flank though. Maybe this maybe this is your job dealing with this flank. Like stand stand right here and just Overwatch in that direction. The other thing I could do, I guess, is stand right here and try to throw a grenade to a place that will help. No, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for the Overwatch. Out of curiosity, though. Yeah, I can't quite... Can't quite make a thing happen. That's fine. Uh, Overwatch... Like, here. You are gonna move up, and you're gonna at least give it a shot. So where was that... The other one's even further back. Be right there. Yeah, move up, stay low. There's a chance of a kill. If I hit the body even once, we'll reduce their max HP by 40, which might lead to them dying since they only have 50 HP. Nope, it reduces their max HP, but not all not their current HP at the same time. However, we did do 40 damage and cause a bleed. Which is lethal, yeah. Guy has sniper training, but he only has a pistol. Okay, and I think we're gonna want to just jetpack. Can I jetpack? Yeah, this is this right here. This is what I want. I'm gonna try to get a position that's gonna make life difficult for the dude over there. Alright, that was some pretty good shooting on the part of our assault. Wow. You would think that um, point blank shooting in the, that guy in the face over and over again would do more damage than that. But he's, like, very doomed. I wonder why he ended his turn there. I assume he keyed in his entire move before... That must have been all of his action points, because otherwise you would assume he would move over here, get shot, and then run away. Oh, there's more of them than I thought. Okay, well, if the sniper can pick this one up, then we can have the assault run in the building and put this guy away, probably. So there's a lot of them. There are more of them than I thought. Hold on, let me, let me start with the heavy. Let's see what the shots Maybe. from the top of the building look like. So having a, um, having a slightly downward angle on them helps, but this tree is not helping anybody. Okay, wearing a football helmet. All right, we'll, we'll come back to you. Let's see what this shot looks like. Okay, I'm gonna be pretty careful, or there's a non-zero chance that I shoot my own dude. Again, like lines of fire working very differently. I would like the shot to be like this. So let's move our our guy out of the way first. It looks to me like I can basically just run in here. 
I'm a little leery of presenting myself to those guys, but this should work. Man, this guy's actually really tough. That go that goofy rooster football helmet he's wearing is apparently very good at uh, the thing that it's doing. Well, we can't even really shoot the gun out of his hand, which I was uh, <laughs> really hoping we'd have the ability to do. Okay, hold on. How much damage does the grenade do? Uh, 50. So it's going to be a lot less effective. Just shoot him in the face to drop his willpower by five? Maybe that'll work. Maybe that can make him panic. <gasps> he only lost three well points. That's not the amount I was told he would lose. Okay, now let's go to the sniper and pick this up. I think it's like that. Oh, are you not dead? Uh-oh. You have two HP. I was told that was going to be lethal. Well, that does complicate things a little bit. The pistol only requires one action point. We could take a pistol pot shot and hope to finish the job, because if we don't finish the job, our other dude's in a lot of trouble. So close. Eh, didn't, didn't get it. Odds were pretty bad on that one. Uh, why don't you... Yeah, that... That's... Complicating. That, <laughs> that makes things harder. Can we get anywhere that has a shot with you? No, we cannot. All right. Well, I think we have a we have a man here who is going to be in a uh, grave situation presently. I'm on the move. Let's get you to some cover and Confirming take the shot that you have. These uh, these dudes are tougher than I was expecting, based on this being the first mission and everything. I think we'd be very foolish not to go for just center mass here. That was almost entirely crotch shots, it looked like. It's a level of brutality you're not prepared to see. So, we could drop down a level. That doesn't feel like it helps. What does the shot look like? Moving to the right actually would help a little bit. This means that I'm not in cover on that side, so I'm, I'm, I'll still be crouching, though, right? Because I'm... Yeah, I feel like I'm in half cover from A side. Is that... Oh, it's just a tree. Uh... Huh. I thought I... thought this location had a, uh, had a line of sight line being drawn. Well, that's no good. Okay, I guess do this. Cause a penalty if they choose to move forward. And if I run over to here, I still have decent cover from those dudes. Yeah, like, this is the best I can do, I think. We just gotta make them have to come over to me a little bit. You're in danger. But you're in danger no matter where you stand, so. This is not going exactly the way I was hoping. I have, uh, I have not mastered the system yet, it turns out. In the first 45 minutes of play. That's alright, if we didn't start out screwing up all the time, then we wouldn't have that very satisfying feeling of improving. So those guys are taking some shots that are way outside of the effective range of the weapons they're using to take them. None of them have even hit her cover yet. Don't mess with me. I guess, yeah, the pistol does only take one action point to fire, right? So you, you may as well just keep trying. Yeah, right in the face, too. Whoa, that is a... That is a huge amount of blood that is pouring out of your head, my dude. I think you should surrender. We have a medical facility. I'm not saying it's gonna go, like, great for you, but you are... You are in an untenable position. Alright, let me... Let me move back over here. This guy has come out from behind his cover. Sorry, let me... Let me initiate this... Want to shoot at him, please? No line of sight. Okay, some parts of this system are a little annoying. Can I? Um, maybe just throw a grenade. Loud and clear. 
It is not going to be lethal. All right, hold on. You just wait a second. I'm going to have everybody else do their stuff first. Okay. You could run here. You know what would be really cool? Bash only takes one action point. It would be neat if we had enough movement to run over here, bash that guy, and then shoot him, but I don't think that there is any version of that that really works. Okay. You have this shot, and I think we ought to take it. This plus the grenade is a kill. Ew. <laughs> yeah, fair. Fair, I can see why you might be upset. Then again, maybe I should just... I should probably just shoot again, actually. We shouldn't spend the grenade if we don't have to. And I bet with, um, with the way the bullets work and stuff, I bet it's possible to accidentally hit things that are behind what you're shooting at. And... Alright. What does my shot at you look like? It looks like a real maybe, is what it looks like. Yeah, I'm not going to stress about that. That that guy's so far away. Confirming target. Let's just put you down. Hostile neutralized. And then it's real easy for the assault to clean up the other one. Also, we should come over here and get the loot. In situations like that, I don't necessarily need to uh, precision aim. It's a magazine for the pistol. Well, I mean, we may as well grab it. I don't actually have any action points. Okay, uh, you. You. I guess just don't do anything? Because I'm screwing up here? Got you covered. Keep an Overwatch up? We only have fire coming in from one side, so we may as well take cover from that side. I'm not too worried about this, though. Oh, you fool! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> it was a miss, but it was a very visually impressive miss. Okay, he's doing the recover thing. Well... It's gotten pretty far away. Can I get up here? I cannot get up here with enough action points to take a shot, but I can make it to some cover. I could start trying to like run all the way upstairs, but like I'm, I'll be so far away. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get any damage done. This is uh, this is awkward. You don't have anywhere where you have line of sight. That's that's a tough one. I think, honestly, I may just maintain Overwatch here. I'll keep my eyes open. If they choose to come out, we will uh, we'll do something. We can run the sniper up a little bit just to try to uh, to give us a better angle. I don't really want to be out in the open. I guess this works though. And then the assaults are going to have to actually like do assault stuff a little bit. We're going to have to push. Okay, so you're actually you're actually down here on this level. Is there a place where I have cover and can shoot you? No. You can take that shot, but like, what's even the point? So I probably just probably just like move up like this. That makes me a little nervous. I would like to not... I'd like to have Overwatch available. I guess it's just not... It's not really going to be an option. I move up to here where you have full cover. That means that you actually could potentially get a shot if we can get you in the right... No, we can't. Actually, we can't get deep enough in the building. 
We could do this. It's not super likely to result in anything, but we don't know which guy which way this guy's gonna run. Oh, maybe he'll come forward enough. Nope. They are all very mad at the sniper. Okay, this turn we should be able to get some get some hits in. That's gotta be sufficient, right? Uh, it'll take me a while to get used to F being fire instead of one. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. I am starting to understand it and to get the implications of it. So what did we get here? First of all, we got a bunch of level ups. That seems important. I gotta get the heavy some, <laughs> some XP. So XP is divided over people according to the amount of work they put in. We cannot just have a uh, have a, a couple of strong characters carry a weak guy up to high level. That also has some hey worrying implications. My name is Athena, and I'd like to thank you on behalf of Synedrion as a whole. You know, outsiders sometimes think of Synedrion as a bunch of naive, helpless people living in a big bubble. And I know we can appear that way, but the truth is, we are more like a powder keg. Trying to build a truly democratic society without hierarchies involves a lot of arguing. The terraformers want one thing, the polyphonic tendency another. Zara clashes with Nikolai, Stas tries to keep everyone calm, every haven has a totally different set of priorities, and then something like this happens. I'm being honest about our flaws, because I think, crazily enough, the whole thing works. We've built something remarkable, given everything we've been through, and the Phoenix Project could help us really make a difference on this wretched planet. Think about it, please. We have a lot in common, and here's your payment. We believe in people being rewarded for their labor. Uh, I do wish I could see what here's your payment meant before I decided whether or not I wanted it, because if it's this resource, we could probably use it. That seems like a low number. But if it's other stuff, I would rather have the reputation gain that I'm assuming I get for returning down payment. I'm going to go this way. We need to make friends with somebody. Then you have our gratitude. All right. Nine points of attitude. Hopefully that's a lot. So, uh, like I said, I think we're starting to understand what the system is. We can see here the area of the mist expanding. I'd be a lot more comfortable if that wasn't so damn close to our base. Um, but I think this is maybe a good place to call it for the moment. Uh, my intention with the series is to have another hour of gameplay up every weekday. So, thank you all so much for watching this for now, and come back next time tomorrow to see if we can make something of our happy little start here. And we'll see you then.